it's time to get your arrows popping. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Wick with Fort Bend Tutoring, and today's tutorial is going to be about how to find and write an augmented matrix. But before we do that, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and click on that notification bell so that you can be identified when we're uploading new and fresh content. That's right. So we have augmented matrices as a topic for this tutorial. And basically an augmented matrix is just a representation of a system of linear equations written in standard form. That's right, the standard form of a linear equation, which is AX plus BY equals to C, where A is a positive number and the coefficients A, B, and C are integers. That's right, so no fractions or decimals when writing standard form of a linear equation. And that's exactly what we have here in example one. We have X plus 3Y equals 16, as well as 9X minus 5Y equals negative 16. And these two linear equations are in standard form. In order to write our augmented matrix, we're going to go ahead and open up our matrix here. And what we'll do is we'll take the coefficients from each one of the three terms in our standard form of the linear equation. So I'll be taking the one coefficient from this first term of X in the first equation, and then I'll be taking the three from the second term in that first linear equation. And then what we'll do is we'll use this dash bar here to represent the terms that will lie on the right side of the equation. So I'll have a 16 here and that will be the translation of our first linear equation into our augmented matrix. So basically we're just taking all the coefficients and then just writing those coefficients within our matrix here. So that means in the second equation I'll take the 9, I'll take the negative 5, and then on the right side of the equation I'm bringing down that negative 16. And this is how many of your textbooks will write the augmented matrix for this linear system of equations. However, I tend to do this. I will generally, instead of the dashed line, I usually will write a solid line there. And some textbooks use that same notation. So I'm more comfortable with the solid line here to separate the left side of the equation from the right side of the equation than I am the dashed lines here. So you'll see me write the augmented matrix like this in this video. I'll have one, three, a solid line here, and 16, as well as the nine, negative five, and negative 16. So you guys let me know which version of these augmented matrices you prefer or that you find used in your classrooms, okay? I'm gonna be going with the latter over here on the right, but you'll see it often written as it is on the left as well, and both are correct. So, red box it, people. That's right, I'm gonna box up these answers here. And remember, the way I'm gonna write the answer is just like the one on the right here. And that is problem number one. So I wanted to remind you guys that you could set up a paid online tutorial today with me, Mr. Witt. That's right. You can set up a paid online tutorial by going to FortBendTutoring.com or you can check out our website at FBTMath.com. There you go. So anytime you need a personal math tutorial, you can just look up Mr. Witt and Fort Bend Tutoring to assist you in your test preparation and math homework. All right, let's continue on, guys. Problem number two, we have negative 4x plus 3y equals 15 and negative x plus y equals 6 for our system of linear equations. One thing about this problem that you should note is that the equations are not in the standard form of a linear equation that I described earlier. However, it is in standard form according to some textbooks. That means that standard form isn't standard across all textbooks and classrooms. So you'll have to ask your teacher if they consider standard form where the A value is positive or if the A value can be any real number. It all depends on your textbook that you're using for your course as well as your instructor. So let's go into this problem assuming that these problems are in standard form. And if that's the case, that means that this augmented matrix would be written as negative four, three, 15, and then we'll close up our matrix there for that first row. And then for the second row of our augmented matrix, we would have negative one, one, as well as six. And this would be our result for the augmented matrix. However, you can also rewrite the original system into the standard form that I defined earlier in the video. That means that in rewriting this, we would have positive four X 
minus 3y equals negative 15, as well as x minus y equals to negative 6. And we would rewrite the system to show that these equations, once multiplied or divided by negative 1, would yield us the standard form as defined and described at the beginning of the video. If you use this version, then you'll end up with an equivalent matrix that has the following values. 4, negative 3, negative 15, as well as 1, negative 1, and negative 6. So that's why it's going to be important for you as a math student to verify with your teacher and the textbook that you're using for the course whether the form of the original system is in standard form or if you'll be expected to make sure that your A values are positive. But as far as using these augmented matrices to solve a system of linear equations, both can be used to get the same result. So the first solution, as well as the second solution, will yield the same results as far as solving for x and y when trying to solve this system of equations using matrices. Red box it. So we have this solution here, as well as the second solution of these equivalent augmented matrices. All right, let's move on to problem number three. In problem number three, notice that we have a system of equations with three variables. Well, the process of writing the augmented matrix remains the same. You definitely want the x terms first, the y terms second, and the z terms third in this case, as well as your constants on the right side of the equation. In writing our augmented matrix, I'll have the first row written as 1, 1, negative 1, and then the constants 0. For the second row, we'll have 2, 2, negative 1, and 1. And finally, for the third row, we'll have 3, 4, 0, and negative 2. Notice that I ended up with 0 in that third column in the third row because we were missing a z term in that third equation. So you need to ensure that the first column represents the x terms, the second column represents the y terms, the third column represents the z terms, and then the last column represents your c terms, aka the constants. So this is the answer for problem number three, red box it. Just like that, guys. Done and done. All right, let's move on. For problem number four, we have another system of equations with three variables and three equations. So once again, we'll go ahead and open up that matrix and we'll have three, negative six, three, and then our vertical bar separating the coefficients from the variables and our constant terms. We'll have 18, Closing off that matrix. I hate it. Let's fix that. There we go better. And now for the second equation, we'll have 2, negative 3, 4, and 6. For the last equation, you'll have 2, negative 3, 5, and 4. And this completes your augmented matrix for problem number 4. Red box it, guys. Just like that. On to the next. For problem number five, we have Darshan Patel came out of the post office having spent $19.50 on 32 cents and 23 cents stamps. If he bought 75 stamps in all, how many of each type did he buy? First of all, I want to say, what's up, Darshan? How you doing? And secondly, we'll need to go ahead and write this system of linear equations. So notice that we're coming from a word problem in this case. So we'll probably want to go ahead and define a couple of things before we begin. For one, I want to go ahead and start by saying that X will be representing our 32 cent stamps. Just like this. And Y will be representing the 23 cent stamps. All right, so I started out by defining our variables before setting up our system of linear equations for problem number five. So going back over the word problem, since Darshan came out of the post office having spent $19.50 on the 32 cent stamps and 23 cent stamps, we can begin by saying that 3200x plus 2300y equals to $19.50. And this will represent our first equation representing the cost of the 32 cent stamps as well as the cost of the 23 cent stamps and their sum as far as how much Darshan spent at the post office. Our next equation is going to be representative of how many stamps Darshan bought in total. So we know that he bought some 32 cent stamps and he bought some 23 cent stamps and the total number of stamps that he purchased was 75 stamps in all. 
So that means that we ended up with two unknown variables, x and y, as well as two equations. Now this is an ideal setup, guys, because anytime you're trying to solve a system of equations, you want the number of unknown variables to also be the same as the number of equations that you have. So because I have two unknown variables in this case, the x and the y variable, I also want to have two equations referring to those same variables. So anytime you're setting up a system of equations, especially if you intend on using matrices to solve the equation, you want to have an identical number of unknown variables and equations. In this case, I do. I have two unknown variables, x and y, as well as two equations. Something to keep in mind. So now that we have our system of equations written out, now we can write our augmented matrix, guys. So I'm going to open up our matrix here. And remember, it's the coefficients that we need. So for the first equation, I'll have 32 hundredths, then I'll have 23 hundredths, our vertical bar, and then the constant 19 and 5 tenths, or you can write that as 19 and 50 hundredths if you prefer. And then for the second equations, we have coefficients 1, 1, and then the constant 75. And this is going to be the result for our augmented matrix for problem number 5. Red box it. Moving on to problem number 6. Brandon Cooper has a total of 30 bills made up of 1s, 5s, and 20s. The number of 20s is 9 more than the number of 1s. The total value of the money is $351. How many of each type of bill are there? The first step in problem number 6 is shouting out my client Brandon. What's up Brandon? How you doing? And then the second step is to go ahead and identify our unknown variables. In this problem, we'll need a variable for the 1s bills. We'll need a variable for the 5s and we'll need a variable to represent the 20s. All right, because we don't know how many of each we have, but we do know that Brandon has a total of 30 bills. So that means that our first equation that we'll write is gonna be x plus y plus z equals 30. That'll be the first equation, once again, using the unknown variables that we just created. Remembering that the X represents the 1s, the Y represents the 5s, and the Z represents the 20s. For our second equation, it says that the number of 20s is 9 more than the number of 1s. So if we were to translate that, we would say that Z equals to 9 more than the number of 1s would be 9 plus X. But this is not written in our standard form. So before I write it in my system, I would want to rearrange this so that it represents standard form. And I can do that by subtracting x to both sides of the equation. So we'll be able to rewrite this as negative x plus z equals 9. Now, once again, you can go ahead and divide everything by negative 1 or multiply everything by negative 1 to put this truly in standard form. But as I stated before, once you translate that into an augmented matrix, it can be used just fine in solving the system. So that's exactly what I'll do. I'm going to write this equation as negative x plus z equals 9 for our second equation. For the third equation, it said that the total value of money is $351. Knowing that my ones represent $1, I'll have X plus five times Y because every Y represents a $5 bill. And then I'll have 20 Z, which equals to 351. So this completes our system of equations where we have our first equation representing the total number of bills that we have X number of ones, a Y amount of $5 bills, and a Z amount of $20 bills, all equal to the 30 bills that Brandon has. And then we translated our second equation knowing that the number of 20s is equal to nine more than the number of ones. And then for our third equation, we constructed that knowing that the total number of bills equals equals to $351 and that the ones are valued at $1 a piece and that the Y's are valued at $5 a piece. And finally, the Z's are valued at $20 a piece. Those combined had to equal to the $351. And now we're ready to write our augmented matrix. So opening up my augmented matrix here, we'll be writing down the coefficients from our system of equations. We'll have one, 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 our vertical bars separating the constant terms from the variables, and this is going to be equal to 30 for that first equation. And then for the second equation, we'll have negative 1, 0, 1, and 9. And then finally, for the third equation, you'll have 1, 5, 20, 
and 351 to complete your augmented matrix. Red box it. That's right, people. Put your answers in a red box. That makes it easier for you and your instructor to identify where your answer is so there'll be no confusion as far as that's concerned. All right, people. That concludes problem number six. And that last problem concludes this video on how to find and write augmented matrices. Please give me some feedback in the comment section, people. As always, please rate, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel, Fort Bend Tutoring, please. And be sure to share with your class mates, your loved ones, and a couple of people that you hate. Peace. Thanks for watching. We appreciate you hanging out with Fort Bend Tutoring. Like the video, comment, and subscribe. Hit up our website, tutoringmath.net, and set up a private tutorial with me and FBT. Oh yeah, baby.